The competition between WWE and AEW is running absolutely wild. Both companies are trying to outdo each other. And that sounds great, right? Well, not to a wrestling fan. How dare you try to impress me? Stick to the goddamn tag team matches. And don't you dare get rid of the six-man tag matches. I don't get this logic. Uh, the loyalty, this weird-ass loyalty to a company is absolutely insane to me. The wrestling companies are competing and all you need to do is enjoy the show. But the competition took a weird turn. It's just kind of funny to me. For every 250 likes, Sami Zayn's hair gets bigger. AEW responds, for every 300 likes, we will increase the size of Daniel Bryan's beard. That's cute. I have a better offer. For every one like, your Coca Jumbo gets bigger. Oh yeah, baby, the great one wins the wrestling war. Welcome everybody to another episode or the first ever episode of Smack Super Size Down. It was a big show, obviously. If I'm being honest though, it didn't feel as entertaining as I thought it would be. For me, obviously the highlight was the closing segment. Other than that, I don't think we got anything that special for a show called supersized the only thing that's supersized is your dingly dongly after liking the video so let's talk about the show it kicks off with the wwe hall of famer edge and it felt like more of a recap you know obviously edge is great on the microphone but it, but we didn't really get anything that new he admits he underestimated rollins and he's not edge light he was wrong about that he is seth freaking Rollins and because of that he has to end this because our families will continue to suffer He could go to Rollins house and have a chance encountering the Smackdown women's champion Becky Lynch But he will leave Rollins a husk of a man Their story will end at Hell in a Cell and at Hell in a Cell he will scar Rollins' soul So obviously the delivery and everything else was just great. It's Edge on the microphone. I don't need to say more It's just that I was expecting a big-ass moment between the two because this is a smack super size down and it was more like a recap of what happened before we saw the king of the ring tournament semi-finals finn balor versus Sami Zayn. that was actually quite an unpredictable match because i could see both guys being the king of the ring and either way that would be pretty entertaining now after a pretty decent match finn balor wins the match with the coup de gras and advances to the finals so I don't mind that, although I gotta say, King Sammy does sound great, and I wish he won the whole tournament. Just his gimmick, his ego with the crown, I can already see so much entertainment coming out of this, but unfortunately, we're not gonna see that. Now when it comes to battle, like I've said, I don't imagine him as a king, but I do imagine Demon Balor as a king. I think that would be pretty cool. I just don't understand what's the point of the tournament. Why are they not getting a WWE Championship opportunity? If they're not getting anything, at least give him a Burger King subscription. So Naomi was supposed to face Sonya Deville. We were all excited about that. Sonya Deville comes out with a suit and says, Well, you, we didn't finish the conversation. It's a two-on-one handicap match. Naomi versus Sonya Deville. And Shayna Baszler. I gotta say, I love the way WWE are treating Shayna Baszler right now. This looked really badass. So we saw the two-on-one match and obviously they destroyed Naomi. She got some offense, obviously, but it's two-on-one and it's Shayna freaking Baszler. So Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler win the match and um, wow, what a heel. That is a great way to make a comeback. Obviously, she's going to stay as the authority figure for now, but eventually once she starts to just wrestle, she's a brand new woman. Did someone mention women? We see Seth Rollins with a very beautiful suit. He says the best joke he's heard in some time is Edge thinking he has a chance at Crown Jewel. He's not afraid of Edge. He keeps repeating that he is not 
not afraid of Edge because apparently he had way more Hell in a Cell matches, he's way more experienced in Hell in a Cell. And again, this was a recap and basically a promotion of their Hell in a Cell match, which is, I guess, yes, that's the point, that's the whole point of a promo, but... Yeah, all of this could have been done in a little video package and there wouldn't be any difference. Don't get me wrong, I love the story. I'm just saying it didn't really offer anything new. I wish we saw some kind of a brawl, some kind of a weird turn, but it is what it is. We saw Queen's Crown Tournament Semi-Finals, Carmella vs. Zelina Vega before the match. Zelina says, let's do it the right way, she will not focus on Carmella's face, let's just wrestle or something along those lines we saw the match and f at first that's exactly what we got they were really friendly you know they didn't attack each other no punches until carmella crossed the line then zelina vega attacked her carmella asked for her mask but it was Liv morgan and she cost her the match zelina vega advances i'm actually shocked i honestly thought she's going to be the queen of the ring or whatever you know carmella because her gimmick sucks. Surprisingly, WWE seemed to think that this is a great gimmick. This is a great gimmick. We saw another episode of Happy Talk. And of course, we heard more very great jokes. Moss told Corbin a couple of bad jokes and then they poke fun at Kevin Owens. I have another great joke. Can't wait for Raw. Laugh. We see Boogs, he introduces Nakamura and the Street Profits. He also played their music. That was pretty nice. So we saw the Street Profits versus the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. That was a street fight. Pretty entertaining. And again, it's a supersized SmackDown or whatever. And this was a great match. It's just that, you know, we saw that already. I don't think this show was anything that special. Now, the match itself was pretty cool. The finish was interesting. A couple of super kicks, a double splash and the Usos retained the championships as expected. We saw the SmackDown Women's Champion Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks, the highlight of the show. I guess that was a big match, right? Now, since I'm not really that interested in the story, I didn't really care. You know, I'm a big fan of SmackDown for the most part, so I usually enjoy these shows, but I just didn't really feel this episode of SmackDown. Probably just set my expectations a bit too high. By the way, that is a very dangerous thing to do while watching Raw. Bianca distracts Becky Lynch with her hair, and Sasha Banks wins the match. A typical WWE finish. We see Roman Reigns and the ultimate farmer, bro. Brock Lesnar. Ah, look at the boots. Man, look at the boots. These boots seen so much farming. I feed Daisy, I take out the big crap, and then I go to WWE. Pierce hands Lesnar the contract. He quickly signs it without even looking at it. Rain says, you must be some kind of a dumbass. A big dumb farmer who signs a contract without reading it. Farmer? Yes. Dumb? No. I would like to see you drive a tractor. I just can't with these city boys. Let me see you try to do this. I don't need to read the contract. I've already read the contract this morning with my advocate Paul Heyman. The mood shifts, Brock Lesnar is happy, he's smiling, and Paul Heyman is scared as shit. Lovely story, now if I could make my prediction, obviously this is a very unpredictable story, but since I don't see Roman Reigns losing the championship, I think at Crown Jewel we will see Paul Heyman costing Brock Lesnar the match and this way proving Roman Reigns that he's been with Roman Reigns all along. And again, Brock Lesnar talking, music to my ears, makes things a lot more personal, I absolutely love this, what a baby face. And I know many people are going to say, well Brock Lesnar can't read, that's why he signed the contract. The filthy bullies. So that was your Smackdown, thank you for watching this video, I'm pretty excited about Crown Jewel, seems like a pretty interesting pay-per-view. I kinda like these pay-per-views because in my country they started like 5pm I think, so it just feels normal. Thank you for watching The Great One, peace, love and hugs, it's been a pleasure. <laughs>